Hello. So today I'm going to be uh, explaining fighter mechanics in depth. I get this question a lot, and as one of the more experienced members of my organization, I often end up taking people onto the test server, and I hope this video will uh, be able to educate uh, everyone on the basics of uh, fighter mechanics. I'm going to try and make this guide as comprehensive as possible, going into detail about movement abilities and general theory about fighter management. However, uh, it will not be able to cover the entirety of fighter mechanics. I will not also not go into um, carrier fitting in this video, as it varies heavily from organization to organization, as well as the intended carrier use, be it PVE or PVP. If there's enough interest, I could do a basics of carrier fitting, but as of right now, I think I will not. This video is also not intended to be a substitute for actual practice. I would highly recommend getting onto the test server and trying out the mechanics I'm going to explain in this video by yourself. Um, with that being said, let's get into it. So first and most basic part of fighter mechanics is the fighter hangar. And so you can really easily access that by going to your cargo and then simply going to your fighter bay. In the interface, you'll see the three tubes labeled tube one, tube two, and tube three. Each one of these tubes can uh, is where you load a squadron. Unlike your normal drone bay, fighter squadrons have multiple fighters per squadron. So your normal drones, you just click launch all, and then each fighter or each drone represents one drone. However, with carriers, you'll notice these little uh, bars, and each bar represents one fighter. So your squadron consists of multiple fighters. For your light fighters, which is your standard damage ones, you have nine. For your electronic warfare fighters, you have three. And for your space superiority, you have 12 per squadron. Now that you have your fighter bay open, you have to load your fighters into the bay. Loading is really easy. You just click and drag your fighters, the selected fighters you want, into your bay. Uh, keep in mind, it does take some time as fighters are loaded individually. So you have a squadron with nine fighters that's going to uh, have to cycle through the loading time uh, nine times. What this means is that uh, the your electronic warfare or your space superiority fighters will take different times. So your electronic warfare fighters are going to load the quickest because you only have to load three of them. Your regular combat fighters are going to be somewhere in the middle with all, you know, as you have to load nine. Then your space superiority, which I'm not going to load yet, will take the longest as you have to load 12. It's also important to note your fighter base size. So your fighter base size can be seen at the top of your little uh, fighter bay and like cargo, it's displayed up there. Uh, and for instance, for me right now, I have 84,000 cubic meters. Keep in mind though that this fitting, the fighter base size is affected by your fitting, your skills, and what carrier you're using. So it's going to, uh, you know, vary heavily. Um, this is a very important number to keep in mind. It's a hard cap on the amount of fighters you can carry. Another thing that I've seen uh, novice pilots do uh, is completely fill up their fighter bay, which on first glance makes sense. You want, you know, like with drones, you want to have your drone bay completely full. However, with fighter bays, that's not the case. You always want to make sure that you have at least, and I like to generally have at least around 10,000 cubic meters empty in your fighter bay uh, for a regular carrier. The reason why this is, is so that you actually have room to unload your fighters. So right now I have 20,000 cubic meters empty, which is a little more than I usually like, but I'm in the test server, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so with that, you know, with that wiggle room, I can unload the fighters and they go right in. And you can see that my uh, cargo, my uh, fighter bay, you know, op occupied units went way up. So now I'm at 56,000. Then I go, I go to load again, and it's going to go down. Um, so the reason why I say about 10,000 is because your normal units, so your normal, your heavy, your light fighters and your sirens, a squadron of those is going to take up 9,000 cubic meters. Uh, and then uh, your space superiority is going to take up 9,600. So 10K is just a good, you know, even number that you can shoot for. And you you should be able to have enough replacements. The next part about fighter management is choosing which fighters you're going to take in the combat with you. For your light fighters, that being your combat fighters, you can really take any of the racial options. Fur blogs are pretty common as they do the most damage. Um, I personally prefer Templars as they have a little bit better tracking and damage application as well as speed, but any of the racial options are fine. Most organizations like it when their pilots take that sort of mix uh, of fighters across each carrier, as that way they are able to get a nice omni damage type from their carrier blob. For space superiority fighters, 
uh, you know, that being, you know, your grams, uh, the grams are the best, uh, the other races, other racial options are acceptable, although grams are still uh, widely considered the best. For your electronic warfare, your e-war fighters, um, the only viable races currently are the Mimitar and the Galente, which are the Dromi and Sirens. The Amar and Kaldari fighters, which are the Locusts, and I don't even remember what the uh, Amar ones are, but they're so bad, uh, as a Newt and uh, Jam. They're really weak, and they would need a massive buff before they're really even viable in the current PvP meta. So, now that you know the basics of fighters, the next question is how do you use them? So, when you first undock your screen uh, from a, a carrier the first time, your screen will not look like this. Instead, it will look like this. So, it's not very really anything different than your normal uh, screen. The th only difference is this little six-stop button down in the bottom right of your capacitor. So what you need to do is click that, and that will toggle between your abilities and the fighters, or between your modules and your fighters. Uh, and then from there, you can uh, view all your fighter options. However, this is not ideal, as each time you wish to command your fighters, you would then have to switch back to your modules, and then back and forth and back and forth. And if you're looking at your modules, you wouldn't be able to keep, uh, wouldn't be able to see how well your fighters are doing. So, luckily, CCP gave us a nice little nifty thing on the bottom of the four options. You have the uh, detach from the, your capacitor, and now when you click that, they are detached, and you can click and drag. So now you can put the fighters wherever you want. Personally, I like them above the overview. I have some friends that like them right above their normal uh, module rack. Other people like it above their, you know, their chat windows over there. You can really put it anywhere. It's personal preference. Um, after you move it once, it is uh, the game does remember where you had it last. So instead of having to go and uh, each time, you know, you accidentally click that button to go set it right back up, you just click the button and it'll go right back to where it was. So now that you have the fighter uh, uh, management uh, window out of your uh, out, now the question is, how do you launch them? So launching is pretty straightforward. You just go and click the launch all fighters button. And what that does is quite intuitive. It launches all the fighters from your hangar. Uh, what you might notice once you have your fighters launched is that you have your three fighters with the little indication on the brackets with the three uh, three triangles. And they're nicely labeled one, two, and three. And that corresponds to the tube they're from. So tube one has the one, tube two has the tube, and tube three has the three. So that way, even just looking at it, I know very quickly that three, that's where my sirens are, because I put it in tube three, and then one and two, that's just my normal combat fighters. Um, another thing that uh, is very important at this point, at this stage, is to make sure that your tactical camera is on. So you may notice when I zoom out, you see the little co-eccentric circles coming from my carrier, as well as the fact that my fighters have these nice blue orbit paths. And if I click on the individual fighters, it also shows their uh, orbital direction in regards to the uh, fighter and my ship. Uh, so the question is, how do you get that? Very simple. You just click on the tactical overlay button right up under your cargo bay uh, on attached to the capacitor. So you click on that. Alternatively, you can use the command control D and just activate that normally. Um, so now you have your fighters out and in space and they're moving around. You're going to want to issue commands to them. So in order to issue commands to them, you need to make sure you have this little blue circle around your fighters. And you may notice that as I click on a fighter, the circle changes from fighter to fighter. And that that circle means is that that is the uh, object that is getting commands issued to it. So if I want to have my fighter go somewhere, I can click, make sure the fighter is selected, I can go and just approach. And it's the normal commands like that for your normal movement. And then we'll see the fighter split off. The other two are holding the orbit patterns. And if I want the other two to go join it, I don't actually have to have them click on them, you know, one at a time. That'd be really, you know, annoying and slow. So instead, I can control and select multiple ones at once. And now I have them all selected, I can send them off. And keep in mind that every that as you have the blue command circles around your fighters, your normal movement commands that you would normally get from your ship, so like approach and uh, orbit, will not be done by your ship, but instead be done by your fighters. And now I set them orbit 15, they're going to orbit, um, but my ship will not. 
So then the question is, well, I've had my fighters out and moving around, but I want to get back to move, issuing move commands to my ship. How do I do that? Simply click on your capacitor, and now the movement commands that you issue are going to be done to your ship and not your fighter. And you can see I'm starting to move into that orbit pattern, but I'm going to hold my position for now. It's also worth nerd noting that certain commands, even if you have your uh, uh, circles, the circle command, uh, the blue uh, blue command circle around your fighter, your fighters still cannot do them, uh, notably being aligned to. So I can't have my fighters go burn off in some direction, but my ship will instead uh, get that command. Additionally, warp to is another one. I click warp, it's going to be activated Hold on my ship active. and not my fighters. If for some reason you have a fighter selected that you don't want to have, so let's say I just want to issue movement commands to my two normal uh, combat fighters, I can once again just go control click on the fighter I don't want to have selected and it will be deselected. And now when I issue commands, oh, not like that. Now when I issue commands, my siren will not get them. By default, whenever you uh, launch your fighters, I'll just pull them in just to show you. All of your fighters will be selected. It's really easy to see. So I pull them in. And after a short time for refueling, put them back out. And now by default, all my fighters are selected. So that way, whenever I, you know, you jump in the grid and I say up, go lock something up and activate your modules, they all activate at once. Don't have to worry about uh, issuing commands. Now, one thing an astute viewer might have noticed is when they, uh, got called in, they have a little bar on their name after I recall them that says refueling. And you'll see landing, and now they have a refueling. And there's a little timer right there. Now the refueling mechanic uh, is how the fighter rearms and repairs. So any non-fatal damage to fighters is repaired, and spent charges from your fighter F3 abilities are rearmed uh, with the F3 abilities. Uh, we'll be getting into those in a bit. So. Uh, if I were to say have damage on my fighter, which would be shown on these little white bars, when I pull it in, the more damage, the longer it would take. And then as far as if I were to activate an F3 ability on my alt and then pull them in, you'll notice that the refueling is going to take a lot longer for the fighter that used the ability rather than the fighter that used none. And it's a uh, cumulative, so the more of those F3 abilities that you use, the longer it will take for them to refuel. Now that we've covered how to launch your fighters, it's now time to start covering the fighter movement. So once again, we're going to get these fighters back out and start issuing movement commands. As I said earlier, you can just right click and approach. And that's going to be your most basic movement command. Alternatively, if you lock something up, I'll just say this mantis, for instance, I lock it up. I click attack on it. My fighters will automatically go and start burning into their optimal range on whatever my target is. So that's another very easy way. You land on grid, lock up your target, press F1, and your fighters begin to burn in. I'm just going to bring them back. However, uh, the clicking approach, you know, just right-clicking approach or using your uh, whatever your approach key is, is not always helpful. As there are times that you will need to fly your fighters to a point in space where there is nothing at all. And then this is where the specific movement commands uh, come in. By default, this is going to be bound to your Q key. For me, I have it bound to a key in my mouse. So what you do is you press Q, and what you'll see is this nice blue circle comes out from your ship. And see so a zoom in, you see the circle coming out from my ship. And so this circle shows you uh, is how you do the specific movement commands. Um, so you'll notice the little line going from the circle to my ship with a number on it. So that number is the diameter of the circle. So right now I'm at 11 kilometers from the center of my ship. I zoom out a little more, you know, 75, and a little bit more, 200, as far out as I really need it to go. So. I press, I hold Q, I drag the line out, and let's say I want to go move my fighters, you know, somewhere in between that Dromi and that Mantis. So what I do is I go, I press and hold Q, move it out there, and I say, well, that's probably about 46 kilometers away. So I wait until it gets to 46, I click, and then I can go up, and that'll move it up on the plane, or I can go down, and that'll move it down on that plane. Then wherever I click, be it up or down, 
I finish it off, I click right there, and now my fighters are going to move to that spot. I'll just activate my prop mod, get them all there nice and fast. Once again, this movement command is affected by the blue uh, command circle. So if I'm moving some of my fighters over there, and uh, you know, so I can move some of them, if I just want to move that, I can send that in a different direction. It's only going to be issued, the movement commands are going to only be issued to the ones that you have your command circle on. So I can just go bring them back, select all of them, put them right into the space right next to my ship. Another really nice thing about the movement commands is that you do not necessarily have to be doing all the movements directly from your ship. So you'll notice whenever I do the Q, Q out, it's always coming directly from the center of my ship. And so for the really close range stuff, you know, within 100 kilometers, you can do that pretty well by eye. However, for stuff at, you know, greater than 100 kilometers, you know, you know, four to five to six to 700 kilometers out there, it can get really difficult. So the workaround is to do your initial movement from your ship. So let's just say I want to go out 100 kilometers and up in that direction. I can send my fighters out there, turn on their prop mods, and they'll get there pretty fast. And then as they're burning there, you can look at the fighters. And we see they're approaching their spot in space. And now that they're there, let's say I was off by some kilometers or the target moved, you know, for whatever reason, I need to move them again. Well, let's say I want to move it 20 kilometers to the right, right of those fighters. Well, instead of going out there, you know, trying to figure it out, say, you know, is this about 20 kilometers out? And then trying to go up and be on the same plane, you know, that could really get you off. You could really be off by some. Instead, what you can do is just simply right click, look at your fighter, and then reissue the movement command. And there we go. Bring it down to 20 or 19. It's a you go 20, double click, and now the fighter will go right there, 20 kilometers to the right, which is very useful. Now keep in mind this whole idea of looking at a fighter and the initial movement command will only work on uh, your fighters and your ship. You cannot look at an enemy ship and then press Q right next to it to have the ship, uh, to have your fighters burn right at it. You also can't use, you know, friendly. If I were to go look at this Mantis, I try to press Q, it's still going to go off my most recent looked at object um, that I have control over. It will also not work if I were to write, uh, look at a friendly ship. It only works from your ship and your fighters. Another uh, thing about the fighter Q movement is that when you issue a movement command, let's say I am issuing movement command, I press. you have to press and hold Q, draw it out, left click and let's say i'm in this stage and i realize i'm a little bit off you know do i have to finish the movement command in order to get that get it there and no you do not really simply you're in that stage you can just right click instead of left clicking so normally you left click and then left click again you move there well if i don't want to do that i can just you know as i'm in the second point i can just right click and it'll stop or it will not it will not it will not issue that movement command so let's just bring them back as we get into the next thing. So uh, this is uh, one of the uh, whole idea of this uh, custom movement of your fighters is probably one of the most important and hardest to master things about fighters. And so from that, I would highly recommend if there's only one thing from this video that you go on the test server and uh, practice, it's this. Generally, what I do when I'm teaching people as I come out here with a carrier or two, I drop a whole bunch of fighters around and I have them try and manually pilot their fighters to certain points uh, to those fighters um, and, you know, as they're moving or uh, whatnot. Uh, if you don't have a you know a spare carrier, you can always just go around in the frigate, anchor some uh, you know jet some ammo, and just use the jet cans as points. Um, or just you know if you're pretty good at eyeballing stuff, just pick points in space, you know, um, to go see if you can manually move your fighters around. Uh, later in this video, I'll be getting into why being able to do this is so important on a wide variety of ops. So I'll just bring those back for the time being, um, as we start going into the fighter abilities so i've been kind of hinting at this a little bit but 
uh, talking with the different racks. But um, I'm going to a depth now. So your fighters have three racks of abilities. So you have your F1 rack, you have your F2 rack, and you have your F3 rack. So your F1 are repeating abilities that will never have a cooldown and will cycle continuously. And so for your space superiority and your light fighters, that's your, your standard attack. For your uh, electronic warfare drones, that's whatever electronic warfare they have. Um, and so if I already just activate it on my alt, it's going to start firing. They'll go hit their orbit pattern, and they'll just keep on cycling. And it doesn't matter how many times I use this ability, it will not affect the uh, their ammo count or their refueling time. So I'm just going to turn that off, bring them back. The second ability is something I've used a bit in this video, and that's their prop mod. And so this functions just the same as any other prop mod would on a ship. You send them in a, uh, off in a distance, activate your prop mod, and they go much faster. And you can see their speed, 1541. It's going to cycle between that and distance. And now it's up to 9,000. So it really makes a big difference. So when you're burning uh, far, it's going to make a big difference. Uh, the prop mod does have a cycle time, and it will only activate while it's on while it's cycling. And unlike your normal micro warp drives that you can cycle infinitely, they have a cooldown. And so you notice there, the ability is cooling down. And so you're not able to reactivate it until that cooldown cycle is done. Your final uh, ability is your special. And so this is uh, your heavy rocket salvo for um, your light fighters. It's the uh, propulsion disruption for your space superiority, and the torpedo salvo for your heavy fighters, and the micro bomb for your long range fighters. And so, what this is, is that this is generally an ammo ability, and that it has a specific number of charges that can only be used. And once the charges are up, it cannot be continue to be used. So, as I activate this, you'll notice it fires, and now I'm at 11 when I was at 12. And the cycle time on this is kind of long, but the alpha is nice and high. And you'll notice that it did when this recycles. There is no recycle time like there is, or cooldown time like there was with the micro warp drive. But it does do a lot more damage than your normal attack. So I activate my pulse cannon, and you see that I do 2,000 damage about that. I go ahead and activate my heavy rocket salvo, and now I'm up to just under 4,000. So that's a pretty big jump in damage. Uh, another thing that's very important to keep in mind is that any time you issue attacks, so if I bring my fighter is right back there. Anytime I issue an attack on an object or on a yeah on anything, my fighters will automatically enter a holding pattern around that object. So they get their orbit up and they get their transversal up. Now, generally, this is really good. You know, when you jump into combat, you're shooting at you know whatever ships. You get your orbital up so that way they can't just blap your fighters off, especially with your space superior or, or not your space superiority, your sirens. Um, makes it very hard for them to, or m not very hard, but much harder for them to attack your ship directly, or attack your fighters directly. However, they will only start orbiting after the, uh, after each time you issue an attack. So now that I've just brought it back, they're going to sit there until I issue a new attack. So the new attack can come in forms of, if I were to, say, activate the heavy rocket salvo, they're going to go back and enter that holding pattern. Or, if I were to decycle my guns, and I'm going to bring them back just to show you, I decycled my guns, bring them back. Now I activate it, and they're going to re-enter that uh, holding pattern. So when I'm going into some of the specifics, and I'm going to be showing later in this video, uh, like on a Citadel, you'll see why that's important to note. Um, but just in general, if you're trying to keep your fighters in a specific spot, and you're constantly recycling your guns, you're going to have to understand that your fighters are going to constantly try and move away from you. So now that I've gone over that, I'm going to be going over um, the basics of uh, space superiority fighters. So I'm going to bring the uh, sirens back, and I'm going to load up a squadron of space superiority fighters. So space superiority fighters really make their mark against other fighters, and uh, in some cases against frigates. So if you have a lot of frigates on you, you're probably be benefited by launching you know your your space superiority or if you're trying to defang supers or other carriers they'll be launching space superiority so i'm just going to launch them so you'll notice the ability bar on the space superiority looks very similar to your normal um to your normal uh fighter uh, ability bar so uh so you have your standard micro swarm you have your evasive maneuvers and then you have your tackle 
Now, the important thing to note about the tackle is you cannot use it on another ship. So I try to use it on another ship, it's not going to work. The only valid target for it are other fighters. So I use it on there, and now I can activate it. And so what they do is they reduce the velocity of that ship, and they make it unable to use the prop mod. So right now it's on, and I can't use it. So I turn it on, and I can't use the uh, my, my, my micro warp drive for it. But as soon as it decycles, I will. So it's decycled, and now I can cycle that prop mod. Um, another thing that you'll see with your space superiority fighters is that they have this little, what looks like a shield booster. And what, while it looks like a shield booster, it does not actually uh, regenerate the health. So as this takes damage, it's not actually going to uh, get health back. However, what it does do is it acts as essentially like you know a nice little afterburner. And you'll see my speed is at 2,066. I activate it. You can see it starts going a lot faster. And now its speed is up to 5,700. And I actually think the boost is more than that. It's just since it's in such a tight orbit pattern, it's not able to really hit its top speed. Now, the first and most basic ability on your space superiority fighters is their micro swarm missile attack. So I use that, and you get this nice little damage. However, it doesn't really like to do damage against ships. So right now, you see kind of anemic damage to ships. However, when I go ahead and try and use it on a drone, Recycle. You notice it does a lot more, just 10 times the damage against fighters that it does against the ships. So, as I start do, I mean, doing damage to the fighter, you can see the fighter's uh, damage bar is slowly turning from yellow or from white at full health. See all these of white at full health to, uh, to yellow. So, if I were to just uh, quickly lock up the other fighter, you'll see. Activate that once. And it's that nice light yellow color. That's a much deeper yellow. And if I do more damage to it, it's going to go into red. A little bit more damage will take it into red. And now it's at red. And you can also see on your little fighter overview, when your fighters are taking damage, it's at red. And then finally, it's going to die. And so as your fighters die, and you know, anytime you drop in combat, you'll probably lose fighters, they are completely gone. And that's like another uh, item you're going to have to go and buy and replenish. The other thing about losing fighters in combat like that is that as they die, your fighter squadrons become less and less effective. So now when I activate an ability from my fighter, let's just say my standard attack, I do 1900 damage as opposed to my full health squadron, which does 2100 damage. And this ability and this uh, degeneration of your uh, of your fighter's damage over time as they lose more and more and more is cumulative. So uh, if I were to lose another one, I'd drop off DPS even more, and I would keep on dropping off DPS as I lost more. Um, with that being said, a nice little trick that I've learned is that when you are trying to defang other carriers, a lot of times it's actually more helpful just to take them down to only one fighter left. So I'm going to do that right now. I will start tearing away at this fighter. Actually, I am going to use that one to shoot at it too. Just so I can get it nice and quick. Take it all the way down. And so let's say this fighter was way off of my ship. I'm not going to move it that far out. Well, let's say let's say it is. It's moving quite slow right now as I have it webbed down. Move it out there. So let's say it's out there as it's taking damage as I'm shooting at it. So if this was an enemy fighter, they'd be noted. They'd start noticing that their fighters are taking a lot of damage. And they, you know, notice that their fighters are doing less damage as it's as it's uh, losing that. So what a lot of times people do that I feel like is incorrect is kill it completely. Um, and the reason why I don't like doing that is when you kill it completely, you are able to immediately launch a new fighter to your bay. Um, so they're able to immediately rearm and relaunch from their carrier. However, if you just leave it at one, and I'm just going to get it down, and one more cycle, it'll die. 
and now it's down to one. Now when I try and activate an attack on something, it's going to do very little damage. All right, now it's doing none because it's not even in its optimal. But I'll just bring it in. It's coming in. And now it's doing 100 damage. So that's, you know, compared to the 1900 that it, or 2000 that it does normally, it's doing about 200. And then even its strong missile attack is only doing 400. So I'm going to turn those off. And so in order for them, so I like to leave it at just one because I do very little DPS and it forces them to recall their fighter. Actually, I don't need to recall those ones. But it forces them to recall. And now they have to wait through the refueling time. for uh, So any uh, of their rocket salvos that they had launched before, they actually have to wait even longer. And you cannot, you know, put new fighters into your damage squadron until it's fully done refueling. Uh, the alternative to this, of course, is if you fully kill a squadron, which I will show you now. It's going to launch that out in space. Going to lock it up. Now I'm going to kill it. And there we go, it's dead. I can now immediately go and start loading new fighters into the tube. So that way, if you just do a lot of damage to it, you're just going to really hold their fighters hostage, make them not do any damage. Of course, you don't get the nice fighter kill mails, uh, which everyone just absolutely loves, but you'll end up doing more good for your fleet. So that about covers the basics of general fighter combat uh, on grid with things. Some other uh, important things to note about uh, carrier combat and fighter combat in general is how the NSA works with other sorts of modules. So your network sensor relay, which I've been mentioning a couple times, is essentially a massive sensor booster. Uh, and this thing is super useful in combat because uh, it um, allows you to essentially increase your lock time to about one to two seconds on anything. So fighters, which normally have very small SIG radiuses, I can lock very quickly. And on bigger ships, it's essentially instant. Um, however, it also has its drawbacks. When you have it active, you cannot point or web anything from your ship, which is why having your sirens are really nice. Or, or not really nice, it's mandatory. You can, however, newt. So I can activate a newt. But now I tab over to my account that has a heavy warp disruptor fit. Activate the NSA. Lock something up. I try to use it. And I get that nice error saying that it takes 1.6 million units of charge. Uh, and that's because the um, the way that the NSA sort of uh, disallows that is by making the capacitor requirement be uh, like a thousand percent or something like that. So there's no way your ship will ever have that much capacitor. The capacitor you know, is 1.6 million. So now I'm going to go over some uh, combat scenarios that you would probably see. And in this case, I'm going to be doing it on a citadel. So I'm going to select the citadel over here. Uh, and before I go, I'm also going to show you what happens if you warp when you have your fighters in space. So let's say your fighters are in space and you need to get off the field quickly. You do want to warp off to a citadel, warp off grid. You know, you, you just want a GTFO in general. Uh, you can warp with your fighters in space. So I just click warp, active. activate that, and my ship will enter warp and my fighters will stay. However, any movement commands I have issued to them, so I go send them out there. Actually, I'll send them farther, even farther. So I want to make sure they're able to get there before I hit warp, or not able to get there before I hit warp. So there they go, burning off into oblivion as my ship enters warp. So I tab over to my other account, and you'll see my fighters are still burning off into that point in space I sent them to. So if you ever have to warp off, it's generally a good idea just to do that. Pick a spot off in space that you don't think anyone else is at, and you send your fighters there. That way you don't have to worry about them getting uh, killed as easily. So now that you have landed on grid with your intended target, you will want to recall your fighters. So you do that normally just by clicking the Recall All Fighters button. And they'll say returning from unknown space. And it takes them a couple seconds to enter the warp tunnel. But after they've done that, 
they're going to appear about 20 kilometers from your ship. I think 18 is what they generally do. Um, it's also important to note that you want to make sure that you wait for your ship to fully decelerate before you activate that uh, return the, or you re recall the ship functionality. Because if you do not, instead of warping to 18, as uh, um, they will warp to something like 2,000 kilometers. So instead of being right there, they'd be all the way out there, which is really bad because you will not be able to have them. You not, would not be able to reissue that warp command. You have to be off grid from your fighters in order for them to get that sort of functionality. So instead, you would have to wait as your fighters burn the 2,000 kilometers, which is really annoying. The other reason why it's bad is that your fighter cannot cloak, or sorry, not your fighter, your carrier cannot cloak or tether while your fighters are burning in like that. So now, how do we make put some of these uh, uh, mechanics to practice? So I'm just going to load up a third squadron of fighters and begin shooting a citadel. So uh, normally, you never have a carrier engaging a citadel at 30 kilometers, but just because this is the test server and I don't feel like spending time burning my fighters 600 kilometers, where I'm going to do it anyways. So I launch my fighters. I would lock up the Fortizar, and I would just activate their F1 ability. Do they all go off? Start hitting the orbit patterns. So I'll turn on my track and computers as well, just give them a little bit of a bigger orbit pattern. And you'll notice that their orbit patterns take these nice big loops around the Citadel, um, which is really not ideal. Uh, when you're shooting at Citadels or something like that, that's not something you want to have happen. So I'm just going to activate my F2 and send them around. I'm, I'm going to keep one of my fighters right next to me, though, so I can give you a nice example. Actually, I'm going to keep it out at range, so I can still hit the Citadel. It's still pretty close. So what you'll notice, now my fighters are aggressing it, but let's say something's going on and I need to bring my fighters back really quick. You want to get off grid, you want to cloak up or something. Well, when I click recall fighters, it's going to take uh, my fighter one and fighter three a long time to get back. As opposed to fighter two, which I held right next to me, it's going to come back really fast. The other problem that you may notice is that the fighters burn in a straight line. So for Fortizars, this really isn't that big of a deal. Because the Fortizars is this really small, thin structure. But for your bigger uh, structures, so that's going to be your uh, industrial ones, AFNORs, I've had this happen. I've seen this happen a lot of times. People click recall on their fighters, and then they get stuck on the AFNOR, which is really annoying. Because then your fighters, they spend all this time doing unit, you know, trying to burn through. And so what you generally end up having to do is issue some movement commands. You know, you go up, you know, and then go... Then once it's up, you can, you know, get it up there. And then you go over or something like that. The other problem is that with the uh, large and extra large structures, you have to deal with their point defense batteries. So uh, if you've ever fought a Fortizar before or a Tatara, you will know what a point defense battery is. And what it is is essentially a giant smart bomb for the Citadel. So for an unrigged Fortizar, I think it's about 5 kilometers. Rigged, it gets up to 20. But uh, essentially, any time your fighter ventures within that and it gets turned on, you're going to have pretty much all of your fighters die and die very fast. And so if you had your fighters just orbiting and you pull them back, so if I, once again, you know, engage my fighters on that, just go send them off, turn on their micro rub trash so they get over there. So now they're burning far side of that citadel. It's going to take a little bit for them to get there because this is still a pretty big or orbit path. So they get back there, and now I click Recall again. The orbit path is going to take them in, you know, especially for that one, since it's going in the uh, line of least resistance. So you can see it's going right through the docking radius, which means it's going to be right in that nice little uh, pocket of five kilometers. So if the uh, Fort is our gunner is smart, turns on his point defense system, I'm about to lose a nice, you know, uh, essentially 40 to 50 million uh, ISCA fighters right there if they're tech two. Maybe a little bit more. I haven't checked the prices recently. So that's really bad. And so once again, as I mentioned, the way that you avoid that, see if I can just pull these in real quick. It's taking a little bit. Get their prop mods back on. 
So where you avoid that is when you launch them, just issue that Q movement command. So you launch your fighters. It's going to take a second for these guys to refuel. But you launch them. You issue the attack. And then you issue a movement command to keep them, you know, right where you want them. Keep in mind, though, if you have decided that you are going to use your heavy rocket salvos, and that would be a very, you know, basic thing on your op, um, you will have to reissue the movement command every time. And the reason why you may not want to issue your rocket salvos is because every time you issue your rocket salvos uh, from your heavy fighters, or from your fighters, it counts as re-aggressing the Citadel. So you notice you get the cannot warp, uh, you know, your warp disabled penalty. You know, it's at three seconds, I reactivate it, and it goes back up to 30. So that's really annoying, as well as the fact that you have to constantly be retelling your fighters to go sit in that particular spot. So I'm going to bring them back. There's other little things about your fighter uh, bay that's uh, worth of note is that you can only launch uh, certain types, uh, certain uh, amounts of each fighter at a time. So you notice right up there, it'll say three out of three light and zero out of one support. So what that means is that I can only launch, uh, I, I can, uh, I can only launch three light fighters at a time or one support fighter. So uh, how that applies in the practice is I can have three tubes of uh, your uh, your regular light fighters. You can have three tubes of your uh, space superiority, but you can only have one tube of your sirens. And so that's to prevent people from having essentially just dedicated. Um, scramming or pointing carriers because that would be incredibly long just to have carriers that can launch three sets of sirens. Another thing that's worth noting is that when you launch your fighters, like ships and like drones, they do have lock times. So when you jump in for the first time and if you want to say immediately point something with your sirens, so you want to immediately point something with your sirens, uh, so you turn your NSA on, do everything right, launch your fighters, and I'm just going to get them Oh, it's going to be a little bit before it gets there. That's the wrong thing. A little bit before it gets there. It does have to lock up the target. So it will not just immediately point it. It does have to lock. So that about sums it up for the basics of fighters. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or message me directly. Um, I like to think I'm pretty knowledgeable about this, so I feel like I can uh, well equipped to answer most questions that you may have uh, about fighters in general. Additionally, if there's any other topics that you would like for me to cover about EVE Online um, with carriers or other types of capitals, I'd be more than happy to cover it. So just leave those in the comments below. And if one gets a lot of attention, I will see about making a video of that in the future. I hope this was helpful and allows you to be a much more competent carrier pilot and hope you have a great day. Fly safe.